Hello there, I'm James Gilmer, your user services librarian, here to introduce the library's webinar on using Pfeiffer Library. So I'm now sharing my screen, so you should be able to see the Tiffin University Library homepage. And so this is what I'm going to be working with for most of the session. And so what I'm going to go over today is first just an overview of the library's website. And then I'm going to cover the different ways you can access the library and just distinguish the different types of logins. I can get a little confusing, so I'm going to kind of break that down for you. I'm going to show you how to just do a basic search for library resources. I'm not going to jump into very advanced search strategies, and that's for another webinar for another session. But I'm going to show you a basic search and how to do them just for just an introduction. And then I'm going to show you where you can get research help and extra assistance. If you ever have trouble accessing the library or have trouble with um, technical difficulties or anything like that. So if you want to log into your own account, your own library account during the demonstration, you're more than welcome to. And if you have any trouble, I can address any issues at the end. Um, so throughout this session, if you have any questions, there is a chat box located on the right side of the Blackboard Collaborate program. And you should be able to put questions in there if you have any. I'm going to save those until the end just so I can get through everything. And then if I need to address the questions individually, I can. Um, and then in the meantime, if you're able to please just keep your microphones muted for everybody else so they can hear me, that would be wonderful. So kind of with those things out of the way, let's jump into the first topic for the session, which is just giving you an overview of our website. So what we've got here, this is the library's website. It is library.tiffin.edu slash home. You can also just type in Tiffin University Library into Google, and it should be one of the first results if you don't remember that web page title. And so you can kind of see on the top of our page here, there are these different categories, and I'm going to kind of go through each one a little bit here. So the home page is just going to take you to uh, this home page if you kind of feel like you're getting lost. You can just click the home page. It'll take you to our home page. There is the About tab, which is going to give you an explanation of our for hours and events. It has information about our staff, so myself and the director. Things about the library on the inside. So it has a breakdown of what's on the main level and the lower levels, as well as the upper levels. It also has information on how to reserve classrooms and study rooms. You can see that's also located under the study rooms tab, and it tells you what's in each one. So the same things that are located on this About tab here, they're also located on the left. So they're just different ways you can navigate the page. So there's information about study rooms and things inside the library. There's going to be a page about uh, news related to the library. So it's, it's a blog, so we post to this pretty often. Um, you can see I posted earlier about the upcoming webinar that we're doing right now. We also have our policies listed here in terms of Circulation, so in terms of checking books out, checking books in, interlibrary loan policies, which is another uh, form of circulation, ways to get sources, and information about copyright, and terms of use. And then we have a page about our university archive. So our university archive is located in the basement of the library, and it contains a lot of old materials relating to the history of the university. And so we have some pictures actually here of some of the items that are in it. So if you're ever interested in looking at some of the items or learning more about the archive, uh, feel free to check out this page or uh, you can always contact us and we're happy to answer questions you might have about anything down there. So that's what's on the about, <clears throat> the about page. So the next thing I'm going to go to is the find tab. This is going to give you the links to search for different items such as uh, journal articles, books you might need for a class, it also takes you to our list of databases. So right now we have 194 databases, and this is really going to help you with conducting research for classes, especially if you need them for an assignment, um, like a research paper or an annotated bibliography, anything like that. Um, you're going to want to definitely go visit our databases page. We have a link to our research guides, which provide research help on a variety of topics. There are down by subject, so you can always check those out at your leisure, depending on what you might need. 
And then we also have a page on course reserves. So this is more for faculty and staff if you're teaching a class. Um, it's about reserving materials for students to use in the library. So if you have questions about that, you can always reach out to us as well. So the next tab is services. Again, it has information about book borrowing and interlibrary loan. It's very similar to our circulation policies that are located under the About tab. So it has information on borrowing privileges, what your library account is, and I will show you what that is and kind of jump into that in a little bit here. Fees and fines, uh, course reserves again, and then where to get extra help. We also have our services categorized on this page uh, for different types of students. So if you are a campus student, you'd want to check out the campus students link. It has information on different things on campus, like reserving study rooms in the library. We have three group study rooms and then a bunch of computer carrels and also free printing. And then there's also a link to conduct research in Dragon Quest, which is our primary database. And I will do a sample search on that in a little bit here. And then, of course, if you're an online student, there is an online students link. And there's one for doctoral students, as well as faculty and staff. So depending on what your research needs are, what your needs are, you can always check out these links. And there's always the uh, more library services link that will give you some more generic information and links to uh, the different types of services we offer. So the last one is the help tab, which gives us the frequently asked questions page. We get a lot of questions about certain things. And so we will put a lot of those questions that are asked a lot into our frequently asked questions. Resource access was just a kind of information page on how to access different resources, things like that. A link to our research guides again, which are also located on the find tab. So it's the same, the same link. We just put it in different spots. There is also a link to getting research consultations and where to contact us. So research consultations are one on one appointments that a student or faculty member makes with a librarian and they usually are online, um, but they've also been held in person and they usually are research based. So if you need help with research or getting help with any kind of research related problem, um, those are what those are mainly for, but you can also use them for getting extra help with using different resources and things that we have. So you can always schedule an appointment by clicking on this link here. So just remember to click on consultations and then the schedule an appointment link. So that was just a brief overview of our website. I'm going to go back to home here. And so these are the different segments of our website. And they're all kind of linked together. So you may find that, you know, you might be on the about page and you be, you'll be using something from, uh, I don't know, maybe the library policies page. And you might also find it that same page underneath services, depending on where you're at. So we all, we, the whole point of our website is to make things as easy as possible to find. So that's why things might be a little bit linked together. Now, the next thing I'm going to go over is show you the different ways that you can access the library and just distinguish the different types of logins. So you'll see that there is a login function right here, and there's a couple different options. So um, some of these are just convenience, li convenient links. So the first one is uh, MyTU. And that is your personal student portal that has information like your class schedule, upcoming campus events, and news. So that is what that's for. The email link takes you to your university email inbox, which is through Gmail. If you've never used it before, your username is going to be your last name and then your first initial and then your middle initial. And then it's, it's going to be followed by at tiffin.edu. Your password is something that you created on your own. So if you're a brand new student and you have not accessed your Gmail yet, you should have been given a temporary password um, and then that way you're able to get in. The self-service option 
This is where you can view your personal student information. Um, this is actually where your library barcode is located. You may have noticed in the frequently asked questions, there is a question called, what is your library barcode? And um, so your library barcode, I will kind of demonstrate it, how that works in a little bit here. But your barcode is your personal ID number um, followed by the letters TUP. And you can find that barcode when you log into self-service. Uh, I think it's under, um, I think you have to go to my profile and then click on account information. And then it's located or labeled as system ID. And it's a nine digit code followed by the letters TUP. So it's going to look like something like this. I have it highlighted here. And even it says here, if you, if you don't know what it is, you can visit self and get it that way. Or we have access to barcodes, so if you want to just contact us, we can give it to you too. So that is what self-service is. And then the My Classes link is just a link that takes you to Moodle, so you can log into your online classes if you take any online classes. Now, the library account login, that is what you're going to use your barcode for. Your library barcode is going to allow you to request print materials and renew them online. So if you click on that login link, <coughs> it takes you to a login page, and you just want to put in your last name and then what your barcode number is. So just remember, it's that nine-digit code followed by the letters TUP in all caps, and then that will allow you to log in. And so from here, this allows you to access any of the books that you have requested. You can renew books from here, and you can also request books that way. Um, so just remember, when you are using your barcode, you do not need it to access anything online. The only thing that you need your barcode for is when you're requesting print physical materials. So just remember that. Um, so don't worry about having your barcode if you're an online student and you only want to use online sources. You don't need it for that. So those are kind of the different logins. Hopefully those all make sense. Um, I know it can get a little confusing. And something I will mention here, when I go, I'm going to go back to the library account page. So you'll notice that this has OPAL at the top. So OPAL stands for Ohio Private Academic Libraries. And so we are part of that consortium. And it's, uh, there's other schools that are affiliated with OPAL as well. Um, I think some of them include like University of Finley and I think Otterbein, I want to say. But there's others as well. Um, but it's a consortium that allows us to share books within other schools. And so that's what that is. And so kind of going off of that, what I am going to do now, I'm going to close out of here. And kind of going from there, segue into how to locate sources. Um, because I was telling you that your barcode is required to request print materials, but you probably don't know how to request print materials or might need a refresher. So I'm going to jump into that. So when you need to look for any kind of library materials, whether they're print, online, or anything like that, you're going to want to use this search bar that's on the home page. And this is Dragon Quest, and this is our electronic catalog. And what it does is it combines print and online material from not only our campus, but also other Ohio Link libraries that are located throughout the Ohio and other various individual resource licenses that we have purchased for the library. So basically anything that you would find in text format is going to be located in Dragon Quest. So you can get to it by going to the home page, or you can also get to it by going to our databases page. And then if you go to the letter D, Dragon Quest is located there as well. So to do a basic search, you can use this search bar here, or you can also search for specific sources by using these tabs. This will allow you to search for journal articles. This is for searching for books only um, through Ohio Link. So if you aren't aware, we are an Ohio Link affiliated school. So that means any books that are at other schools that are also part of Ohio Link you can also request and have access to to get sent to this library for pickup and to be used. So that's a really great resource because it really opens up the amount of materials that you can use. 
There's also a journals tab, so you can search for journals. And then there's also a tab for our research guides list. So I'm just going to go back to Dragon Quest for our demonstration here. So I'm just going to do a basic search. And basically what Dragon Quest does is it basically searches all of our databases for whatever you type into this search bar. So it's really nice because it kind of gives you a sense of what we have. The only downside is that it can be a little overwhelming because there's just so much sometimes. So I'm going to do a very generic search. And before I hit the search button, and you may want to do this as well, you can also select one of these to categorize your search term. I'm going to keep keyword selected, but you can also search for a title by selecting this or search for an author's name by selecting that one. But I'm going to go ahead and just keep this as keyword and hit search. Now I will say if you are off campus, so if that means if you are not on campus or using an on campus computer or not connected to our Wi Fi, when you hit search, so when I when I like when I hit the search button here, you may get a screen that says off campus access and has the dragon logo on it. So it'll look kind of like this. I'm going to actually there is a I'm going to show you what this that screen is going to look like because there, there's a screenshot on our website and I'm just, I just want to show you what it looks like. Here it is. So if you're searching for sources in Dragon Quest off campus, you might get us a, a page that pops up like this. And so the reason this happens is because you're not on campus. So the database doesn't know that you're a student. So what you're going to have to do is log in with your username and password. And it's going to be the same credentials that you use for any other platform that you use at Tiffin. So if you use something for Moodle, it's going to be those credentials. Your password should also be the same. Um, so in my case, um, my username is basically my email address without the at tiffin.edu on it. And that may also be the case for you. So I did want to mention this just because I know there's a lot of online students that may encounter this. And so if you get this, it's, it's not bad. Um, just You just have to log in with your username and password from Moodle and you should be good to go. But if you do have issues, you can always let us know and we'll, we'll figure out what's going on. So kind of going back to our search here, once you get that login taken care of, you'll get your search results. And so when you get these results, um, I searched for something very generic, and so we've got a lot of results, about four, 4 million here. Now there's ways to take, take that number and shrink it, and you can do that by using these filters on the left side. And what they do is they apply different things to your search terms, and so it'll shrink this number to make it a little bit more manageable. Some of the most commonly used filters that I'm going to recommend, um, one of them is going to be the full text filter. That's going to take out anything that's not full text or available with full text. And so just by clicking that one button, we already took out about a million results. The scholarly peer reviewed journals filter is always also going to be very helpful because it's going to take out anything that's not peer reviewed. And you're probably going to need peer reviewed sources for an assignment in a class at some point. Likely your DEC classes will require this. So you will definitely want to use this because it makes it a lot easier. You can also narrow your search results down by publication date, by inputting a date on your own, or by using the drag bar to change the date. You can also narrow things down by source type. So if you're looking for a specific type of source, you can go to show more and check off the ones that you're interested in. So I'll do I'll do books, electronic resources, and journals. And so you can see our number is slowly going down. So there's a couple other filters here. I don't use all of these very often, and you may not either. It just depends on what you need. Um, there's 
a subject filter you can apply as well. There's a publication filter, publisher language. If you speak another language, that can be helpful because you can look at sources in another language. There's also a filter for geographic location and database. Now, if, if you remember, I mentioned that Dragon Quest combines all of their databases together. So what this does is it shows you how many of your search results came from which database that we have. So this is also a good way to narrow your search results down. Depending on kind of what your subject is or what your topic is, this may also help kind of get rid of the stuff you don't want. And you'll kind of see we have all sorts of databases, as you saw probably from our list that I showed you earlier, but there's all sorts listed here as well. These are just the ones that were retrieved from the search terms that we put in at the top. And so once you kind of apply all these filters, you'll see that you will probably have a significantly less amount of results and you'll be able to access the sources pretty easily. So in a lot of cases, if it's an electronic source, there will be a link at the bottom underneath the title. So this is the title of the source. There's some information about the source and, the, and then these are the links to the sources, mostly PDFs. So I'll click on, click on this first one. I guess it's about motorsports. And this is the source here. So it really you only had to click once and it takes you straight to the PDF, which is nice. You can also, from here, you can print it or download it if you like, if you like to save your sources for later. And then you can also click on these links, which are, they're, this, they're a little different. You'll see that it says full text via Ohio link rather than PDF full text. This is just, it's, it's just from another database, but it basically takes you to the same place. So you'll have to just do an extra click, I think. So I think it's, what is it? Did it say it was volume 34, issue one? And the title was Ravensland. Oh, maybe it does. Maybe they don't have it. That also may happen if you're doing a search and you find a source you want to use and the PDF isn't there. That may happen occasionally um, just due to subscriptions and stuff like that. If that does happen, you can also look elsewhere. Um, you can always contact us about a source and see it just to, it, we can check to see if we have it. Um, if not, we can always get it through other means, assuming that other places will also have it. We can usually get it through interlibrary loan. That's how you access electronic sources. Um, but there also is, I'm going to make sure to see if we can find a print source just to show you how to request those. So if something is in print, you're going to see a green request button down here. And it's going to show you a list of different locations that have the item available. So this one, for example, has two copies at Cedarville University. And you can click on the green request button to request the book to be sent here. So it's going to ask for your school. So you just want to scroll down and find Tiffin. And then it's going to ask for your full name. So first and last name. And then you're going to want to put in your barcode. Um, if you remember from earlier, I told you your barcode is for requesting print materials. So you want to make sure you put that in there with the words TUP afterwards. And then it's going to ask for a pickup location. You want to make sure you select the circulation desk. You don't want to select distance education because then it's going, it's not going to get sent here. So once you fill that out, hit submit. And if your barcode is correct and everything, it'll say that the request was successful. If not, you may maybe you typed in your barcode wrong or your name's got a typo in it or something, you can just try that, try it again. And again, if you have issues with doing this, you can let us know and we can kind of walk you through it. When the item is ready for pickup, you'll get an email from us 
saying that it's ready. And so what you'll just need to do is just bring your student ID with you and we'll be able to check out the book to you when you come pick it up. And you'll kind of see there's a couple books that are also electronic. So there's no request button. It just says online access. And that will also happen for ebooks a lot of the time. There may be some instances with print books that we actually own the book. So if that's the case, instead of it saying um, Cedarville University or wherever it's located, it's going to say Tiffin, Maine instead of um, whatever, wherever the location is. And if that's the case, you're going to want to write down the call number just on a piece of paper or something. And you're going to want to go locate it in our stacks because um, you aren't able to request those since you're on campus and the book's already here. So you'll just want to go find it in our stacks and then bring it to the front desk and we can check it out. If you do have some trouble finding it, you can just give us the call number and we can help you locate it as well. So it's not too difficult. Um, but like I said, if it's something that we own, it will say Tiffin, Maine, and the call number will be here. You just want to write it down and go find it in our stacks. Now, the one thing I am going to try to find so I can show you what it looks like, one other way to access resources that maybe a school doesn't have or we don't own is through interlibrary loan. And let me see, I'm going to see if I can find an example here. may take me a second to find something. Well, actually, what I'll do is I'm going to, I will undo that one. Here we go. So this resource here, there is not a PDF link and there's not a request button. The only option is request through interlibrary loan. And what that is, is that what we do is when we receive a request with one of these, we will reach out to other institutions, um, not just in Ohio, but in other states to see if they have the resource and if they're willing to loan it to us electronically. Um, this is mostly for journal articles only, or if it's a book, um, it would only be a chapter um, due to copyright. We don't we don't electronically loan full textbooks or anything like that. Um, we do. We will loan print books, though. So if you want a print book, you can also do it that way. But if you want to request an item through interlibrary loan, you just want to fill out this form. You're going to want to put in your barcode again, your name, your email, and then if you're able to pick up materials on campus or not, and the date you need the source by. The form will automatically fill out all of the details about the resource for you, so you don't have to worry about that. And then just hit submit when you're done. And the request will get sent to our email address and you'll usually hear back from us within a couple days. Um, it can usually take, depending on the type of source you're looking for, it could take anywhere between a day and maybe two weeks if it's something that may take a while to get here. But um, usually the, if it's electronic, we get it to you within a couple days. So that was kind of an overview of doing a basic search in Dragon Quest. Now I will show you, I won't go into detail, but there is an advanced search option and you'll see that it's kind of located up here and you'll see there's more than one search bar. So it allows you to look for more sources and look for more search terms for more complicated searches. So like if I have American history in the first box here, I can also type in and it will add that to my search terms. And so it allows you to basically conduct more specific searches. You can also use these drop downs here and categorize your search terms. So if you are looking for a specific subject, you can select that or a title. So this would search for uh, the words in a title of a source. You can also search for an ISSN or an ISBN number. Those are the identifying numbers of a book or journal. 
And so if you want to know if we have something very specific, if you're able to get the ISBN number, you can type it into here and it will see, you'll see, be able to see if we have it. The um, last part of the advanced search is um, there's these drop downs on the left. And these, what these do is they distinguish a relationship between the first and the second search term. So and is going to be the default, but what it does is it searches for uh, both terms that you type in when you have and selected. If you choose or, it's going to search for either one of these search terms. So it's going to make your search a lot wider. It's going to cast a wider net. You can kind of see our amount of results really jumped up there. And then if you choose not, it's going to exclude whatever second term you put in here. So like if, if I'm doing research on American history and I'm getting a lot of results about Canada for some reason, I can change this to not put Canada in here and it should eliminate a good chunk of the sources that maybe I don't want. And so you'll see the number of results changed there. So that's kind of just an overview of the advanced search function. Um, I didn't want to jump into it too much just because this is very much an overview of the library and how to do different things. But that is how I to use Dragon Quest for the most part. Now, like I said, Dragon Quest is a great place to start, but you can also search all of our databases individually. You can do that by visiting our databases link right here. And it gives you a list of all the databases we have. Now, any of the databases on our list that have the word EBSCO right here underneath the title, that means it is going to look very similar to how Dragon Quest functions. So if you know how to use Dragon Quest, you'll be able to use any of the databases pretty easily that have the word EBSCO underneath because they have the same search functions and they look very much the same. So you'll kind of see, I, this is Academic Search Complete, which is one of our databases. It has the same exact filters and links to the sources that are in that database. Now, not all of these are going to have EBSCO underneath, so you may need to learn how to use a couple databases if you do search for different things. But they're usually pretty easy to figure out. Um, once you kind of get the hang of it, it's, it's not, too, not too bad. If you do need help with any of these databases or using any of them, you can definitely go to our help tab and go to the tutorials link. And it's going to give you a list of a bunch of tutorials that we have that can help you with using any of the databases we have. So we've got on how to use Dragon Quest, like I kind of demonstrated here. There's a guide on how to use um, Grammarly, if you use Grammarly at all for, for writing. There's one on Noodle Tools if you need to use tools for assignment or for citations and then there's others listed as well and so what they do is there's different types of um, help screenshots there's videos there's instructions like step-by-step -step instructions and so the point of these guides is to really help you um, in the event that you can't contact us or you need help right away we want we, we make these guides with you guys in mind so that you can access us and our sources 24 7 and you don't, you don't need to be on Canvas to access these, but they're just really helpful in terms of learning how to do different things and learning the ropes of using the library if you're brand new to it. So kind of with that being said, if you do need extra help, if you think one-on-one -on -one help would benefit you, you can always make an, an appointment with one of us and we're happy to help. We'll set up a time with you and we can walk you through some things with whatever you need help with. And if you want to look at any of the content from today's session, we have a guide associated with um, this webinar and it's located under the research guides link. And you want to scroll down to the using Pfeiffer library umbrella and it's the first one listed. And this basically outlines a lot of the things that I've, I've been covering in this webinar, how to log into the library, how to use Ohio link, how to make requests, how to do Dragon Quest searches, how database our databases work, and getting password help. So 
there may be an instance where you may need to do some tech support or get some tech support or troubleshoot some issues in terms of accessing the library. If that does happen, you can always uh, email us. Our email address is library at tiffin.edu. So you can always email us and we can try to help you out. You can also look at our research guide, which I have up here, which may answer your question. You can also uh, contact the IT help desk on campus as well. And so, cause sometimes it may be an, a, a more of a, a tech thing rather than a library thing. So if that's the case, we may also refer you to the IT help desk for them to take care of you as well. So that kind of uh, concludes most of the things that I was going to cover today, just to do a kind of a quick recap. So the first thing is obviously um, your library barcode. You wanna make sure that you know that. Um, write it down, keep it somewhere safe, don't lose it. But what it does is it allows you to access our catalog and request print materials, including items in Dragon Quest. And remember when you are searching Dragon Quest, you may get that off-campus access screen when you're trying to do a search. Remember, it looks like this. You don't need your barcode for that. You just need to use your Moodle credentials to log in. Um, everything before your um, the at symbol in your email address and then whatever password that you saved for Moodle. So you'll have to just use that to access that, and then you'll be all set. Um, also, a good thing to remember is the databases. EBSCO means that it has the same search functions as Dragon Quest, so it might be easier to use. And then all the others, you'll just have to kind of learn as you go. But we have some tutorials, like I mentioned, that can help with that as well. So if you ever feel kind of lost, you can always check out our tutorials, check out our research guides. We have so many of these that are meant to help you. They're categorized by subject. So I hope that these really help. Um, that's why we make them. And so that way you don't have to contact us for every single little question that you might have. Um, we like to make these so that you can get easy answers anytime that you need them. Hello again. James Gilmer, User Services Librarian, here at the end of the webinar just to give you some resources for additional help should you have questions as you work on your research and other assignments. You can always email the library directly at library at tiffin.edu. And Luann or I will typically get back to you that day during the nine to five Monday through Friday workday or on our next business day for questions that fall outside of those hours. You can also contact me directly if you prefer at gilmerjm at tiffin.edu. I monitor both of those inboxes and get to questions as quickly as I can. For more generalized help, check out our other webinars, research guides, and tutorials that are linked in the description below and on the library's homepage, library.tiffin.edu. Thanks again for watching and good luck with your research.